Good morning, church. How blessed we are, the Lord, to be yet still in the land of the living and thank God for his mighty goodness. I'm glad to be able to welcome you to the sanctuary and the worship center of the Greater Golden Gate Missionary Baptist Church. As you see me here in our sanctuary, I want to thank you for joining me today as we worship the Lord. I thought there was no other appropriate scripture than Psalm 122, and I'd like to read it in its entirety. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord, for there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem, they shall prosper that love thee. Pray, and peace be within thy walls, and prosperity within thy gates. For my brethren and companions' sake, I will now say, Peace be within thee. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Amen. May God bless the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. As I greet you this morning, I want to thank God for this wonderful privilege to be able to share with you in our worship center. I know for us it's only been a matter of weeks, but it seemed like it's been even longer than that. But brothers and sisters, I want you to keep faith in God and continue to trust in God for all things. He's been too good to us to ever let us down. And even now, while we try to worship him in spirit and in truth, and even in the comforts of our own homes, I pray that you will be blessed by the word that is shared here today. Let me share a word of prayer at this time. And as I pray, I want to encourage you to remember members of our church who are sick and shut in. Remember, if you will, Sister Rosalind Scott and her family. Uh, this week, Sister Scott lost another sister and a graveside service will be held for Mrs. Janice Abraham in Tyler, Texas. Uh, and we want to pray for Sister Scott. Also, if you will, pray for Brother William Petty and his family and the loss of his sister, Mrs. Mineola Silver from Houston, Texas. There are no services that have been planned for her at this time, but I would if you would keep Brother and Sister Petty in your prayers. I also call the name of Sister Irma Porter, Sister Vivian Carter, Sister Helen Morgan, Sister Lamar Benson, just to name a few of our members who have called in and requested our prayer. Also, if you will, remember Sister Janet Davis and her mother and their family in this time of prayer as well. Let's go to God in prayer. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, how we thank you for this wonderful privilege to enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. How we thank you, Master, for each and every member of Greater Golden Gate Missionary Baptist Church. How we thank you, God, for all that you have already done for us, for what you have yet to do, and God, for what we expect that you will do for us at a later time. We thank you, God, because you've been so good to us. You've looked beyond our faults, and you've blessed us according to our needs. And, Master, even in this day and time as we're suffering and those are suffering from coronavirus, you, Master, are still having mercy upon us. And that's our prayer today. Have mercy upon us because mercy suits our case. We come to you, Master, on behalf of each and every member of Greater Golden Gate. We pray, Heavenly Father, that thou will continue to bless them with peace, health, and love, and prosperity as well. I pray, Heavenly Master, for those that are not feeling well today, but I know that you're able to bless them abundantly, Master. I pray, Master, for those who are bereaved right now, and please give them your peace through the Holy Spirit to help them to receive the comfort that they need. Oh, God, we can't do without you. We don't want to do without you. We need you each and every day of our lives. And so now while you are calling 
on others. I know you're calling on other countries, God. Please don't pass the United States of America by. Please don't pass the members of Greater Golden Gate by. We pray, Heavenly Master, as always, because we know that we're finite, but you're infinite. There are things that we don't understand, nor we even have wisdom enough to understand or comprehend. But we trust you because all things are possible with you. And Father, I certainly want to thank you for the most precious gift that you've given to each one of us. And that is the precious gift of Jesus Christ, your only son. Thank you, Master, for his shed blood. Thank you, Master, for him having given his life for the sins of the many. We pray, Heavenly Father, as always, right now, and we pray the blood of Jesus upon each one of the homes, upon each one of our members. We pray, Master, for perfect health. We pray for healing for those that need it, and we pray, Master, for recovery from those that need recovery. Oh, God, our trust, our faith is in you. And now, God, we pray right now that in the midst of our worship that you will come in and bless us real good. We need a blessing right now. We need a miracle right now, and we're waiting on you, God. Right now, we ask these and all of the blessings in the name, the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen and amen. Enjoy the message this morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Look at your neighbor to the left and to the right and ask them a question. Say, will you have church with me this morning? Wait for an answer. I mean, since you got all dressed up and drove all the way over here, you might as well have church while you're here. Anybody with any, any problems, any burdens, any troubles? Okay, I'm by myself this morning. We're going to put it all in the master's hands. Here we go. Wow. Whatever the problem. 
somebody say he can have a I put it on. They're not finished yet. Matthew chapter 8, and uh, we'll begin reading at verse number 23. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves. But he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he saith unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the seas obey him? Amen. The prayer of the disciples, Lord, save us. Thank you so much for standing. The prayer of the disciples, Lord, save us. Thank you, ushers. Amen. Lord. Save us. Save us. You can be sailing along through life, Amen. making progress and enjoying a trip, yeah. when out of nowhere a storm arises. Yeah. In seconds, you are overwhelmed. Huge waves pound and then launch you mercilessly into the air. Water pours relentlessly into your boat faster than you can bail it out. Howling winds whip you around and drive you far off course. You lose your bearings and your hope. Gaping jaws of doom start to shut in around you. No one is immune to the storms of life. Even if you're doing all the right things, headed in the right direction, storms will find you. The question is not if you will face them but how you will respond. Uh, today I share with you one of the most effective prayers in the Bible and it comes from the troubled disciples of our master themselves as they sailed across the Sea of Galilee. And you may have wondered, Pastor, why so much concentration on prayer this year? Why so many sermons? Why so many lessons. I'm about to get tired of that if you don't stop preaching that and preach something else. I, I had some members tell me that one time. They got tired of me preaching a certain thing. Uh, uh, can't you preach something else? Well, it's because you need prayer. I don't know nobody in here that don't need prayer. Matter of fact, you say you don't need it, you just lied because you probably need it more than anybody else. And these disciples, they may 
have been in the presence of the Lord, but even in the presence of the Lord, there's fear that arises. And these disciples were sailing away from the crowds to get rest when a storm came into their lives. Matthew records that when Jesus entered the ship, the disciples followed after him. And in the middle of the sea, there arose such a tempest, so much that the ship was covered with the waves, but Jesus was asleep. Think about that. Ship was being tossed. The waves were covering the ship, which means there probably was some water in the ship. But Jesus was asleep. Hmm. <laughs> That's something that you need to see. It. <laughs> and his disciples came and woke him saying, Lord, save us. They didn't say, Lord, do you know what's going on? Lord, just in case you need to be informed, it's, 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 it's a storm out there, but what you need, what we need you to do is save us. Or we're going to perish. And when they realized that the storm was too big for them, they, they did what we need to do. And that is go to someone that the storm is not too big for. Them. Carry the storm to Jesus. It was already beyond their own ability to handle, so they went to Jesus. When they came to Jesus, they were able to say it all in three words. Lord, save us. They didn't want no time for no flowery speech now, Lord. We're so honored to be in your presence. How wonderful it is to be here with you. We had such a wonderful time. Don't know if you feel the same way we feel about it. But Lord, we just thought we'd take time out to share with you a word of prayer and concern. Lord, save us! What no time, you know, for long prayer. Not the occasion for sounding impressive by offering, you know, profound thoughts or some multi-syllabled words. This prayer had to be like an arrow. It had to be lean and pointed, directed to the heart of the matter. They did not tell Jesus all the details. Didn't tell him what the barometer was or that was due or how wet it was or how moist it was out there. The fact they needed was that they needed him to save them from the storm. He already knew they were in peril. They did not tell Jesus how to save them. That was beyond their doing. They did not need to tell him uh, to share with them uh, how he was bailing. They were bailing out the boat and lowering the sail. They needed to, to let him know that it was now that he needed to save them. He just asked, probably in a hysterical kind of way, Lord, save us. He said to them, why are you so fearful? Oh, ye of little faith. Got up, and the text says, he rebuked the winds and the sea. And there came a great calm. And it led these men to wonder, what manner of man is this? Uh, I've never seen nobody do nothing like this. How is it that the wind and even the sea obey his voice? We listen at these words, we read these words, but what would be your take on that? To see Jesus stand at the bow of the ship and in the words of the song say, peace, be still. Well, there are some simple lessons. I'm not going to be long, so don't, don't, don't make me long today. Simple lessons that we can take away from this story. First of all, we ought to know that storms are inevitable. Might be sunshine in your life right now, but after a while, the gray storms or the gray clouds of a storm are going to make over your life. 
storms are not reserved for just the wicked. These disciples were men of prayer. They weren't whiskey soap gambling. They were not out in the boat cheating on their wives. They had not robbed the bank and were fleeing from the authority. They were not pirates raiding other vessels. They were disciples of Jesus Christ. In this life, you will face some storms. They may be storms of development, but they will come. Even God's greatest people in the Bible face storms. Adam and Eve had a rebellious son. You remember one named Cain and a storm came up in his life. Noah faced a global flood and later his own failure. Joseph, you remember from the Old Testament, was thrown in the pit, sold as a slave, and then unjustly cast into prison. That was a storm in his life. Moses lost his temper and murdered a man. Later, he had the responsibility of leading a horse of immature, whining people. David was forced to run for his life when his father-in-law, the king, grew jealous of his success. Nehemiah had a strong enemy, and after his conversion, even Paul had repeatedly been beaten, imprisoned, and persecuted. People all through the Bible, from cover to cover, yes, had to endure storms in their life. Yeah. There is a mistaken notion that following Jesus leads to immediate prosperity and peace. Not necessarily. Anybody in here been following Jesus for a long time? Have you struck it rich? If you haven't, I need to talk to you if you have. <laughs> Prosperity does not always happen, nor does peace always follow your coming into a knowledge of Jesus as your Savior. Certainly the way of the cross leads to life eternal and the glories of heaven, but there is a day coming when there will be no more sickness nor sorrow, but in the meantime, we live in a rebellious world. We live on a corrupt earth, and it will continue to have storms. I don't care what you call them, El Nino, Su Nino, whatever you call them, a storm is going to come in your life. We hear it every week. They're talking about thunder shower later in the day. Some other parts of the country are going to have some serious thunderstorms or other kind of catastrophe, severe weather, just because it hasn't happened to you don't mean it can't happen. It doesn't necessarily need to be a lightning storm. But there's some other storm that can knock you all the way down. So storms are inevitable. You know, sometimes following Jesus will lead you into a storm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. These men in the boat, they were not Jonas out on the sea trying to vainly sail away from God's plan for their lives. They were not even out on the water fishing for fun off a prophet. They were only in the boat because they had followed Jesus there. And sometimes following Jesus in certain places will get you in trouble. I'm a living witness and somebody's in here right now. You can quote this Bible till you're blue in the face. But you get out there somewhere on Cedar Springs and you try to quote the Bible to somebody, they're going to tell you. Y'all not with me. <laughs> Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. Uh, you, you try to tell them that the Bible says, but that's your Bible. Am I, am I saying something in here? You don't have to go to Cedar Spring. Talk to somebody in your family. Try to straighten somebody out in your family, and they'll tell you where to put that Bible. Where to go with it. Jesus will sometimes get you in a storm. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> There's a mistaken notion that following Jesus not only leads to prosperity, but you need to also know that following Jesus will also lead to a cross. Mm -hmm. And the 
disciples wanted to follow Jesus. They wanted to go with him, and Jesus had to stop them on several occasions and say, are you willing to do this? Are you willing to do that? If so, then take up your cross and follow me daily. And there are many of us, we love the crosses we wear, but we don't like the ones we have to carry. It looks real fashionable depending on whether you got a silver or a gold cross, whether it's an old rugged cross, whether it's just two nails stuck together. It looks real fashionable for however you want to wear it. But wearing a cross is not exactly what Jesus had in mind when he said you have to bear your cross. And then sometimes the crosses that we say we're carrying is not really a cross, it's just a crop we're bearing. Because some of us have sold some bad seed. And whatsoever a man sow, am I in Bible country? If you hadn't have brought it up, it wouldn't have come up. If you hadn't have planted that thing, if you hadn't have been lying and cussing and all another da 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 da, da I'm just gonna be real today, y'all. What you plant is what you get back. And somebody knows sometime what you plant, the worst is on the coming is on the reaping part. The worst is on the reaping part. Oh yeah. You can get in you, you, you can get in a storm following Jesus. Third thing you need to know that storms are a test of faith. Before calming the sea, Jesus made the point that the presence of fear was an indication of the absence of faith. That's why he asked the disciples, why are you fearful? Yeah. If he didn't hear it in their voices, I'm sure he could see it. And do you know fear when you see it? You know, some, you know somebody who's afraid, scared? <laughs> Eyes get all big and poppy. You know, fear will make you do something. Fear will make you hurt yourself. I'll tell you something else. Fear will make you hurt somebody else. You better be, be, be careful who you hanging out with. Sometimes when storms hit, I wonder if God really loves me. My life being tossed in some storms. Sometimes even as I preach. And at times I get overwhelmed at my own grief and my own stupidity. And I have to stop and ask, God, do you love me? And the truth of the matter is, if he didn't love me, I wouldn't be able to call on him. If he didn't love me, he would not have sent his son to provide a way for me. If he didn't love me, he would not have gone through all the trouble to do all the things that he did to make it possible for me to enjoy the things that I enjoy. But that time that I turned that grief on the inside, and I just look like it's just me, look like it's me. Why am I so Lord? Do you, do you hear people sometimes like that? You know, Lord, why you do why, why owe me? Why me, Lord? Why not you? <laughs> Sometimes what God wants to do is show you, show you yourself. That you're not all you think you are. Pretty as you may be, fine as you may be, you're not all that you are. Sometimes God has to show you that you have a need for him. And without him, you're nothing. Jesus said, I'm the vine. My father takes care of the vine. He said, but without me, you can do nothing. And he wasn't lying. Without him, we'd have nothing. We'd be nothing. Uh, the thinking that, that if God really loved me, I would, protect, I would be protected from storms. I wouldn't have to deal with these storms. But, the, but that clearly is not the case. Jesus loved his disciples. And yet they found themselves in the midst of a deadly storm. Jesus loves you, but there are times that you find yourself in some sticky situations. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Father loves you. The Son loves you. And yet 
the Son of God gave his life for you. But in each one of our boat, there's something we're going to have to overcome. Or we'll be swallowed up by the angry waves. You need to also know this, that you're not in the storm by yourself. Jesus is right there with you. On another occasion, when the disciples encountered a storm at sea, Jesus came, you remember, walking to them. This time, Jesus wasn't in the boat with them, but he came walking on the water to them. And even when he came walking on the water, they were still afraid that time, remember? Remember, they said, ooh, ooh, it's a ghost. And it was Peter who said, Lord, if that be you, let me come to you. And he had faith for just a few moments. He got out the boat. He had faith. He stepped on the water and he began walking to Jesus. But then he, he lost his nerve. Took his eyes and focused off Jesus. And zoop, he began to sink. Jesus did not go with, through, with, with, with us into the storms of life. Then we'd have a good reason to be afraid. But he goes with us. Therefore, we ought not fear. And listen, brothers and sisters, another thing we need to remember is that Jesus can handle a storm. It's right here in the text. No storm is too big. No wind is too fierce. No wave is too high. Jesus can handle all of it. Jesus was so unafraid of this storm that he was sleeping through the storm. Now I know, I know that time when you can just be so tired that you can just sleep right on through the next day and you won't say, somebody say, well, did you hear all of that last night? No. <laughs> I didn't hear none of that. Yeah, you can be tired, but you need to know Jesus wasn't tired. He knew the storm was there. But the storm was there for a reason, not for him, but to increase the faith of the disciples. He had power. The Bible says he stepped up and rebuked the winds and the sea. I don't know what kind of storms you're facing. Maybe the loss of a job. Maybe the serious illness or the death of a loved one. One of your children is in trouble, in an accident or in jail. Could be in the throes of a divorce. But just as Jesus was there for the disciples, he's there for you right now. And not just you, but he can handle all of us at the same time. What you need to do is to trust him. And then finally, you need to ask. Yeah. Why am I talking about praying? Because that's what praying is all about. It's, it's, about, it's about asking. The disciples didn't wait until the boat had capsized. And they were hopelessly adrift in the danger of the deep. They went to Jesus. Asked him to save them before waiting too long. Asking in prayer has always been advocated by Jesus. Here, here are just some of my favorite requests. Matthew 7 and 7. Ask and it shall be given you. Matthew 7 and 11. How much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? John 14 and 14. Jesus says, you may ask me for anything in my name. John 14, excuse me, 15 and 7. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. John 15, 16. Then the Father will give you whatsoever you ask in my name. John 16, 24. Until now you have asked, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be full. James 1 and 5, if any of you lack wisdom, he should ask God, 
who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to him. James 4 and 2, you have not because you ask not. Nah. It's just that simple, my brothers and sisters. What you need to do is ask him. Songwriters say, ask the Savior to help you. Comfort, strengthen, and lead you. So if you find yourself in a storm right now, don't be too afraid to ask the Lord to save you. In whatever storm you're going through, it may not be on, on water. It might be right here on land. It may not be in the church, it might be in your home, maybe on your job, whatever, whatever, whatever kind of storm you are going through. Just know that if you follow Jesus, he will not only lead you in, but he will also lead you out. Uh, have I got a witness? Uh, that's why I'm so glad the Bible says uh, that after Jesus rebuked the wind and the waves that there was a great calm. Yeah. Am I right about it? Uh, oh, why are you going through a storm? It seems like nobody else is going through but you. Mm. Have I got a witness? Uh, you can't see what other folks are going through. Uh, they may not know what it is you are going through. That is not important. Uh, but what is important uh, is whether or not the Lord knows uh, about your storm. Have I got a witness? Uh, I have a witness uh, that he knows uh, what's going on with us. Even before we ask him anything. Have I got a witness? Uh, so you won't be surprising the Lord uh, when you go to him in prayer and say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, oh, whether shall I go? I feel all right here now. I thank God Almighty that the Lord knows how to calm the storm. Is there a witness in here? Anybody in here been through a storm? You may be able to sing, sing the song like the mighty clouds. I've been in the storm too long oh yes maybe you've been in the storm so long you can't see your way yes my lord but i'm glad today there is somebody who can see see you in the midst of the storm have i got a witness in here you may not be able to get to him but if you know how to call all on him he sure enough know how to get to you if you trust him if you try him he's never let me down ain't he all right anybody in here know his name jesus in the morning jesus late in the evening oh Jesus, when the sun go down, ain't he all right? Can you help me call him? Jesus, yeah. Oh, how I love to call his name. Ah, Jesus, every day he's the same. Jesus, ain't he all right? Can you say hey? From day to day, our Heavenly Father, He sees, He knows, He watches over. He watches over us. Lord, save us. Why wouldn't He? When that's what He came down here to do to save us from ourselves. 
Surely if he can save me from me, he can save me from the sea. He can do it if you let him. If you ask him. The door of the Lord's house is open. There's somebody in a storm right now. You need to know, you need to get to Jesus. Or you need to make sure that he gets to you. And if that's your case, we invite you to become a member of a group of people who are willingly calling on the name of the Lord. Doing his will, seeking his purpose. If that's your case, we invite you to come to Jesus today. Or if you're in a storm and you need some help finding your way out, there's somebody here who can help lead you to Jesus, help you to get that way. If you're here, you ought to come right now. By letter Christian experience or candidate for baptism, we invite you to come to Jesus while the blood runs warm in your veins. Amen. Mighty male chorus is going to help me sing this number. Uh, uh, like the ship that's tossed and driven, I've been battered by an angry sea. When the storm of life arrages and the fury falls,
brothers and sisters, weren't, wasn't that a, a great word from the Lord? I hope and pray that you were truly, tremendously blessed by the word. And I know that in a day and time like this, uh, we need nothing else other than the word of God to help us make it through our day. And so while you were sitting there watching the worship service and hopefully you became a part of the worship service, uh, hopefully you will strengthen as well as encourage uh, spiritually to, uh, to continue to uh, fight this good fight of faith. Just a couple of announcements I want to share with you before uh, we finally depart. I want to encourage you that if there was someone in your midst or if you there uh, did have an experience with the Lord, uh, that you would share that information with us. You can do so by calling the church office, and uh, if not getting anyone, please leave a message and let us know that you def definitely had a, a religious, a spiritual experience with the Lord. And, and uh, we need to know that, that someone was saved or either someone made a decision to straighten up their ways and uh, come back to the Lord. So please, just share that information with us if you don't mind. I want to tell you of something that we'll be doing in the upcoming weeks, starting on this week, uh, and that is we will be having a series of devotionals on Tuesdays, and that will be at 11 and at 7 p.m., and also on Fridays at 11 and 7 p.m., in which you can receive not only the Word of God, the written Word of God, but you will be uh, blessed to uh, also hear some gospel music as well, something to get your day started, something to help you focus on something other than coronavirus. I want to encourage you to do that on uh, this Wednesday. And you can uh, get to that by simply going to our website, and there will be a message there or a link there for you to get on uh, to the uh, devotional message. Message. Second of all, I want to encourage you, as you know, uh, this week and uh, next week, uh, leading up to Easter, uh, and I need to let you know that our expenses here at the church have not stopped, uh, just like yours have not all stopped. So I'm encouraging you uh, to go to our g3mbc.com website and share uh, your tithe and offering or your other gifts with us uh, by means of our website or through our Give Plus app. You can access it there. You can go even to the Give Plus website and uh, you'll be able to type in the name Greater Golden Gate Missionary Baptist Church and uh, they have our account there and you can deposit your uh, funds there as well as you can still mail your funds uh, through the U.S. mail to our church address here, 9333 Ferguson Road, Dallas, Texas, 75228. Now, won't you do that for us, please, because it's very important. Uh, while, uh, while we're still off uh, in our shut-in situation, uh, the bills are still mounting at the church, and everything still needs to uh, be paid, our employees as well. So just hear what I'm saying. Uh, we want to encourage you to be a blessing, uh, not only to the Lord as we're here when we're in worship in our church sanctuary, but also while we're away, uh, we can take care of that business for the Lord as well. And then I want to invite you on Wednesdays to tune in to our prayer meeting in our Bible study period. You can do so uh, by calling in to the freeconferencecall.com number. Uh, many of our members have already uh, called it in, and we're going to have it scroll across the screen right here along with the code number so that you will be able to get in touch uh, with us and you will be able to hear us live. We will be sharing in prayer as well as in our Sunday school exposition. So you can do that on Wednesdays both at 11 a.m. and at 7 p.m. We invite you to call in and let's be on one accord as we share in this call. Finally, I want to share with you, as you know, next Sunday uh, will be the first Sunday Palm Sunday, the first Sunday of April. And again, I want to remind you to let us uh, give our tithes and offerings uh, during that time, even as we always do when we come into our worship center. But it's Palm Sunday, embracing the Easter resurrection holiday season. And as we go into this season, we don't want to forget not only our obligations, but we don't want to forget 
how Christ paid the ultimate sacrifice for our sins on the cross. And so we want to sanctify our Sunday worships on first Sunday as well as on Easter Sunday, the second Sunday April of April uh, this year. Also, as you know, first Sunday is also our Lord's Supper service. And uh, though we are not be able to be here in the building, uh, the leaders and I are trying to come up with a way by which you might be able to still receive uh, the Lord's Supper. And so bear with us and we'll give you more information uh, on either our prayer meeting uh, line as well as or either during our devotional period so that you'll know what's being prepared for you. Uh, but please uh, be aware that we have things that are in motion that we are planning for you so that you will be connected to us and that our church will continue to prosper. Share with any of our members, if you will, any of these contacts. If they uh, do not know how to get online for the conference call, you can just simply access them in by dialing them in and uh, by way of three-way call, you can get them in on the call as well any number of ways and please if you are unsure about doing anything you can call the church office leave us your information someone will contact you and assist you in helping uh, to get access to these various mediums I want to take this opportunity to thank Dr. Lou Blackburn who is uh, in charge of our Remind system, as well as Brother Skip McCoy, who is uh, taking care of our media and making sure that everything, as well as our website, will help us stay in contact with one another. I'm going to leave you now, brothers and sisters, but I want to give you the benediction that we receive each and every Sunday. And our prayer is that God will bless us as we take our leave of this place, but never dismiss us from his presence. In Jesus' name, amen.